Harry Park was host to the next round of the Super Saloon series with the Classic and Modern Motorsport Club South. An interesting qualifying session would see 11 of the Super Saloons be combined with a huge grid of tin tops, meaning a very busy Mallory Park to start off the weekend. It would be Rod Burley putting in the pole time over a second clear of Ronan Bradley in second position, both of them winning their respective classes. Burley set his best lap off a 50.333 on lap number seven. Ronan Bradley puts in his impressive 51.488 later in the session on lap number 11 that was over 1.1 seconds back he was still fastest within class b however as gavin dunn was next up he was himself over a second slower than ronan bradley in qualifying on a 52.833 martin reynolds was next up leading class c he was driving his immaculate Ford Escort to the class honours in qualifying. Adrian Bradley was next up in his E46 M3, only a couple of tenths of a second behind Martin Reynolds. He only set two laps, however, so we could see Adrian flying through the field in the first race of the day. Next up was Martin Scott, third within class B in his BMW E46 M3. Next up was Colin Claxton in his Ford Escort. He clocked a 55.936. Then followed Jack Whitehead in his nude looking BMW M3 going for a fluoro yellow paint scheme this time. His best lap a 57.277 set on the 11th of 13 laps that he completed. Next up was Marcus Bicknell only setting four laps in qualifying so we could see him fly through the field in his Ford Taurus Ascar. A 57.446 probably wasn't representative of how quick Marcus was around Mallory Park. Then the battle for class D honours, it was Ken Hunt ahead of Steve Dan, both seeming to run into problems in the qualifying session, neither of them setting many laps, and they were both 58.787 and 1 minute 1.268 in terms of their times respectively. Then after quite a long wait, as the separate grids meant the tin tops would go first, Super Saloons followed over an hour later, it was time for the Super Saloons race and we were in for a treat, a fantastic lead battle after Adrian Bradley stormed through the field to battle with Rod in one of the most epic lead battles we've seen within the CMMCS in quite a while. It blatantly hadn't been played in sailing for Adrian Bradley in qualifying, only setting a couple of laps, but his representative lap times were much quicker in the first race of the day. His best lap was a 48.8 in comparison to his qualifying, which was a 53.0. So he knew he was a lot quicker than he had seen in qualifying, and that was on show in this first race of the day, as he had stormed through the grid from fifth position up to fourth, then to third, having a good battle with his brother in the mix as well. And then he caught the back of second before clutching the back of Rod Burley for war, a Titanic lead battle between two drivers that have been racing with the club for a long time. Rob Burley would unfortunately have to retire late on, but Adrian Bradley did set the fastest lap on his way to the win after overtaking Rod once he had slowed down. An impressive lap time, as we mentioned before, of a 48.828 was quicker than Rod Burley, whose best lap time was a 49.674. So a really great comeback from Adrian Bradley after the struggles in qualifying. He would take the overall win and within class C as well. Ronan Bradley would take second position. So a one two for the Bradley family. He would win class B both in their BMW M3s but of different eras. Next up would be another BMW Gavin Dunn in his E36. He would claim third position just over Marcus Bicknell and Martin Reynolds who had pressured him through the majority of this race. Marcus's best lap in this was a 51.6. If you compare that to his qualifying of a 57.4, it was clear he was having some dramas in qualifying too and a good comeback to fourth position on the road. 
Martin Reynolds had done a great job too. He had battled with Marcus for the majority of this race, but just lost out to him. But his best lap time was only half a second off him, even though Marcus's car was slightly more powerful in the straights. But it's a good equaliser around Mallory Park that has, yes, two longer straights, but also some really tight sections, which definitely didn't help the Ascar, which took up the majority of the track. This possibly the reason that Martin Reynolds had struggled to get past the Ford Taurus Ascar. Reynolds was second within Class C, third within Class C was Jack Whitehead in his BMW M3 setting some impressive lap times, his best lap coming on lap number 9 of a 53.716. Ken Hunt was the only finisher within Class D and after struggles early on he looked to just bring it home and keep it consistent. Some decent lap times to keep him on the road in 7th position, the last of the finishers, his best lap coming on lap number 2 though with a 1 minute 4.847 he possibly saw Steve Dan his competitor within Class D pull off on the first lap of the race and knew that all he needed to really do was bring the car home the non-finishers were Rod Burley who had completed 15 laps but couldn't quite do enough to be classified within this race. Next up was Martin Scott, an unfortunate DNF for him. He normally finishes the races and finishes them strong, so it was sad to see him retire. And the aforementioned Steve Dan, only completing one lap in the Volkswagen Polo. Great to see that car out on track for the first time in a while. It was a big shame to not see him racing more than one lap. So the fastest laps within each class, it would be Adrian Bradley within Class C with a 48.8. Rod Burley within Class A of a 49.6, Ronan Bradley within Class B with a 50.2, Marcus Bicknell in the Invitational class with a 51.6, and Steve Dan only completed one lap, but it was the quickest within Class D, a 1 minute 2.4. So the combined race will be later on in the day, and we'll have a separate video for that, and we hope that drivers that struggle in this first race with reliability will be back for an exciting finale to the day.